Thank you for that worship. Thank you. That was wonderful. God bless you. I love you, Scotty. Hey. Come on. You're awesome. Hey, brother, man. Get this table right here. I had no idea you were doing This is awesome. Okay. I love you. Oh, wait. I'll get it. Okay. Hey, I'm here all week. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. Let's get the end. Bob's All right, back. so our guest today, he's not a stranger to us, but he's an amazing, amazing communicator. Love you. And uh, so back in December of 1982, he called me and asked me to come to the school here and speak as he was leaving here going into evangelism, and we've been buds ever since. So he's the one responsible for me having this job so if you don't like me or if there's anything wrong please see him after the service okay i love you jamie Regal. let's give a nice round of applause jamie Regal. thank you i've got uh, hey everybody it's been a great day for a lot of reasons but just to be back home and you know i uh i always uh, get a little nostalgic when i come to landmark because i too see some people who have been so formative in uh, being a friend to me and loving me and encouraging me and I wish I could see you but those lights are just burning my corneas out uh, <laughs> there's either uh, I think a lot of its age would you agree that's better but uh, you know I, and if I start naming names I'm gonna forget but Carol and Jenny uh, McDonald pastor what a great message first of all great family. I saw a great group of your family with you. The Neals are here this morning. I just love Alberta and Tommy and the whole Neal clan. And my sweet dad is here today uh, with my cousin Brian. And I could go on and on. And uh, I'll forget. I'm sure I will. Anybody here just hate the whole process of getting old? So yeah. So guys my age the other day, they're going, hey man, I'm uh, going mountain climbing this week. And I thought, well, I got my right leg in my trousers without falling over. So, you know, we've all done something. Um, people still talk about running, and I'm, I want to, from who? Who are you running from? You know, I, I ran the other day. I didn't want to, but the ice cream truck wouldn't slow down. So, <laughs> things, you, I promise you, you think different when you get this age. Uh, you know, I still travel all the time, get to the hotel. I want to do the same thing everybody else does, and that's get comfortable. You know what I mean? Just get comfortable. And sit on the couch, and then you begin to think, how many other people got comfortable right here on this couch? <laughs> how comfortable did they get? And then I want to go read the Bible. Now I know why there's a Bible in every hotel room because all Ten Commandments have been broken in that very room. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here. If you have your Bible, I promise I won't be long and I won't be boring. Ephesians chapter 1. This is an interesting passage of Scripture. As a matter of fact, in Ephesians chapter 1, the phrase in Him or in Christ is mentioned 11 times, 30 times in the book of Ephesians. And at first glance, to be honest with you, Ephesians 1, 4, and 5 appears to teach this doctrine of unconditional election. I have great friends who are Calvinists, Reformed theology, but I don't interpret the Bible uh, in light of Calvinist doctrine. I believe when you read the Scripture, Paul says God doesn't choose people, He chose us. So as Christians, he chose us to enjoy all the benefits of being a Christian. And, and I say that to say this, if you could ever realize what God thinks of you, your life would radically change. Some of you choose to believe you are the kid, you get three A's and one B, and yes, you're in the home where your parents are going to focus on the B. They're not going to talk about the three A's you got, they're going to talk about the B. How many of you have lived long enough to know that your kids don't listen to what you say as much as they watch how you live? My dad's here today. He's 88 years old. In my whole life, 
I've never heard a curse word come out of his mouth. I've never seen him smoke a cigarette, take a drink of alcohol. I've never heard a curse word. I've never seen him slap my mom. We didn't have HBO and Showtime and Movie Channel, to be honest with you. We didn't have it available. But at our house, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have mattered. Because Dad lived what he believed. But Dad never told me I was a loser. Dad never told me you're not going to amount to anything. And it's sad to say, but some of you, the people <clears throat> who should be speaking into your life, they're the ones who have done everything to dismantle your self-esteem. You've spent your... But the downside of that is you choose to believe what they say over the God of the universe who says, look what I've given you. Look what you have. You know, I hear people say, hey, I'd like to own this. And hey, some things are not going to happen. I'd like to look like Richard Gere. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'd love to dunk a basketball just once. I've never dunked a basketball. I've never hit a grand slam in a really important game. I've fallen off my bike a few times, got bit by a dog, stung by a bee. Yeah, there's some commonalities, and I, but I got to thinking, you know, a razor can shave your face, but it can't cut a tree down. An ax can cut a tree down, but it can't shave your face. So don't look down at people unless you're admiring their shoes. Because God uses different people to do different things. And he has something for you. If you just believe that, you wouldn't keep... And you may or may not have heard me say this, but I believe it bears repeating. You need to quit asking God to change the landscape of your life while you remain loyal to the things that are killing you. Why are you still with him? Get a golden retriever. I'm with this guy and he treats me so mean. You're a nut. You're a nut. He accepted you. He brought you into the family through adoption. He didn't have to. He wanted to. Look at this passage with me. Just follow along. Ephesians chapter 1. We won't read the whole chapter because we will try to beat the Methodists to the Chinese buffet which will never happen either. The Methodists have an underground tunnel. I don't know how... AME Zion, they won't make it till dinner. We're all different, amen? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So you see who he's talking to. He's already talking to people who are saved. He doesn't select and choose and say, you get to go. I mean, folks, let me just say this real quick. If you believe God predestines people for heaven, you have to believe that he predestines them for hell. That he created people he would never give a chance to be redeemed. Does that sound like the God of the Bible? You got three kids, he gets to go, you don't. Does that sound like the God of the Bible? God says, I want you to know, here are the benefits you enjoy by being in Christ. Here's what's available to you. Can't... It's frustrating sometimes. Some of you need cheerleaders all the time. People tell me I look fabulous. Well, they lied. I don't say that. It's like people who sing, you know. I have had several people ask me to sing. Who are they? If you can sing, I can fly. Well, I do it for his glory. Well, you can do it in the parking lot. If it's for his glory, I don't have to hear it. Amen. <laughs> and I hope you know I love to have fun. Laughter is good medicine. And you know, how many of you would rather laugh than cry? How many of you honestly realize Brother Carol's message has it become routine this morning? You know, when you get old, nothing's routine. Every day, something changes. It falls off. It shifts. You've got a mole that's grown an afro overnight. 
What happened? Yeah. That happens. So you see who Paul is talking to here, and the scripture goes on to say, grace be to you and peace. Now, who in here doesn't want that? You know, um, a clear conscience makes a soft pillow. If you want to be able to sleep at night, have a clear conscience. But God gives peace, grace to you, peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this class. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places, in Christ, according as he hath chosen us, who are us, saved in him before the foundation. Now, does God know who's going to be saved? Absolutely. But does God do the choosing? Not at all. For whosoever shall call upon the name. If God had already chosen, there would be no need for that. By the way, if God had already chosen, there wouldn't be a reason for Calvary. For God so loved the world that he did what, class? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, that means you. Listen, some of you have spent your whole life, and I'm going to tell you, I told pastor, one of the things that shocked me this week in my reading and research has been copiously uh, providing this information, but do you know that very few leaders finish well very few how many of you know there's pressure on leaders how many of you know there's pressure on your pastor folks I can't if you're going to talk about people do it on your knees and do it talk to somebody who can do them some good social media these cowards behind the keyboards You don't have the courage or the tenacity or whatever, the fortitude. Listen, if you have a problem with somebody, you don't tell 7 billion people. You love that. I just wish people would understand. Hey, pick up the phone, you moron. I don't need to know about that. And I'm tired of seeing your food. Sometimes I share mine, though. Pastor Carroll was talking about going to these beautiful places in Grand Canyon. You know what amazes me? People go to these spectacular places, these, these beautiful creations of God, and there they stand, Niagara Falls, and here they are with their camera like, I want to see you. There's the falls there, dude. I remember one-hour film. Anybody remember that? take a picture you go people I've got to have it in an hour how can you be nostalgic about something that happened an hour ago you were just there I want to see what it looks like you were there you saw it take a picture of Niagara Falls we don't need to see you with your what is your hair doing and these pictures that people (laughs) I'm glad my dating is done yeah, oh, Brother Carroll talked about, he talked about pictures today. I love that. Hey, you want to see our vacation pictures? How about this? How about those Facebook pictures? And then you get to your 50th year class reunion, and you see her. Remember me, head cheerleader? Did you eat the rest of the team? What happened? You sure have changed. And you shouldn't say that. Do you know that? Of course, you know Dr. Rawlings. Well, the thing is now, if you think it, you're going to get charged for it, so you just, well, go ahead and say it. Well, (laughs) the consequences are not the same. How many of you know there's some questions you ought never to answer? Does this make me look fat? It ain't that. (laughs) Some glazed donuts you eat before you go to bed. (laughs) Well, I eat like a bird, like a pterodactyl. You didn't get that way because you eat like a bird. 
You eat like a vulture on his way to the electric chair. And isn't it good to laugh? Isn't it good? Some of you walked in here and you did everything you could just to garner enough strength to walk in here. God says in verse 6, to the praise of the glory of His grace, watch this class, wherein He has made us accepted in the Beloved. I give you this very quickly. Um, If the foundation of a building is improperly laid, the building is doomed. How many of you know that? It becomes unstable. What you believe about yourself is not so much the issue is of what God says about you to be true. I don't always feel good. I hear guys, honestly, don't I look good? Now, you can tell when people are kidding, but you can tell when people are kidding, but they really think they look good. How great I am, how great I am. And listen, you don't have to say that because he already said it. I accept you. You are somebody to somebody. To somebody, you're the most important person in the world. Ephesians, I look at this. It's it's a captivating book. Because in Christ, over and over, and if you only understood who you were, it would revolutionize the way you live. You're adopted into God's family. How many of you know, according to Scripture, you're heirs? You're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Look at look, many, however, and here are some reasons, but they choose to believe the lie. You got a pencil? You got to write this down. The power of a lie is in your agreement with it. It's only true if you believe it. The power of a lie is in your agreement. Whatever you agree with, you give power to. Well, I'm worthless. You shouldn't say that. Don't insult the cross. Don't insult the Christ. You are not worthless. You're bought with a price. He's given you eternal life. He's given you spiritual blessings. You know, I have friends watching online this morning and folks around the country and around the world. I have a dear friend, our friend Bob Hammonds, who's walking through it right now, folks. Battling cancer. And there's others here going through a difficult time. But how many of you know he's the great physician? He's the great healer, and ultimately, if not in this life, God will ultimately heal. One day, there will be no pain. One day, there will be no tears. Anybody here ever cried until you don't have the power to cry anymore? Yeah. You know, I've, <clears throat> I've read this passage over and over. Listen, I want to show you a couple things. These are telltale signs that you've believed a lie. And and you you need that constant bolstering because you've believed the lie. For instance, if somebody disagrees with you, they must not love you. They must, some of you, unless people see it your way, they're gone. It's kind of quiet now. But that's who you are. Have you been right 100% of the time? Well, nobody knows the man I married. Well, you married him. Well, says, you can't be the sharpest pencil in the box or you wouldn't have done that. Don't you remember when people told you, don't do that? Remember what you said? Ain't nobody going to tell me. <laughs> Quadravian is my man. And nobody's telling me. Well... You know, you can blame other people. <laughs> that was funny. I don't care what it is. <laughs> but you got you to understand there are different opinions than yours. You can't overcome what you don't acknowledge. And by the way, folks, light is a gift. It's not an intrusion when somebody has a different opinion than yours. You know, I, I forgot who it was that said this. It might have been John Maxwell. But I think he said, Pastor Carroll, it would probably do us good to hear what people say about us behind our backs. Because it's stuff we might need to hear 
that nobody else has had the courage to tell us. Some, some of you right now, listen, as hard as you try, there's an event or events in your life that still haunt you. Still haunt you. I, I have something I want to say to you. It was a moment. It's not a monument. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us. How many of you knew God knew every sin we would ever commit? And when He died on the cross, He paid that for us. You can be free. You can be set free. Do you? Come on, I don't want to sound like Dr. Phil, but do you not understand the reason you're sabotaging your life with drugs and alcohol and sex and food and money? You Listen, here's what you've done. You were raised poor. You, you barely had enough food. And now you're on this perpetual mission of gathering things that sit in closets, that stay in boxes, and they never bring joy. Pastor, you mentioned it this morning. You get the new car. Guess what? You get the payment book that comes with it. Lost weight. See, I've lost over 100 pounds, but I, that's like throwing a deck chair off the Titanic. I mean... Putting it on is easier than taking it off. And I enjoy putting it on. I don't enjoy taking it off. Let's just have salad. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I want to say that to some people. Hey, let's go brush our teeth. I've been around people just... How do you do that? It's right here. Go in there and gargle. Get some bleach. <laughs> Don't talk to people about Jesus like that. They'll get saved. They'll go to the mission field. They'll do whatever they got to do to get it over with. Okay, okay. I'm saved. But so, here, here you are. You, you, you know what? You got hurt. And that's why you're so rude. Oh, they may not love me, but I'll tell you one thing, they're not going to hurt me. And so what you do is you take all that rudeness and all that anger, and listen, you're building on the wrong foundation. For God so loved the world that He gave. That includes you, folks. That includes me. With all of our farts. Well, there you have it. Uh, here, hello, YouTube. Here we go. False. False. You know, you probably just try to move on, but it's hard to move on. You can even try to pretend like it didn't sound. No, it, it sounded just like it. And some of you won't hear anything else. And that's a shame because this is a good sermon. It just proves that I'm not perfect. It just proves that sometimes we say things we don't mean or shouldn't say or don't mean to say. But I will tell you this. If you've got hate and bitterness in your heart, what you do is you build a life, a foundational life on that bitterness and that anger and here's who you are. I'm going to be mean to you and I'm just that person. I'm going to speak my mind and I'll leave the consequences. You know what? You're that person that says, you may not like me and I don't care. But really you do. You don't feel accepted. You, you, you find yourself buying things and going places. Listen to this. Some of you believe your, your values dependent on other people. Listen, God doesn't love you anymore when you get it all right and He doesn't love you any less when you get it all wrong. God loves you unconditionally. That's what we just read. Believe that God's love for you is determined by somebody else. No! Well, so-and-so don't love me. If you build your life on that foundation, you're going you're gonna to be resentful. And I hear this from adults. 
I saw Casey, and she was, now these are 30-year-olds. I saw Casey at the mall, and yeah, she was with Karen. I thought she was my friend. Are you in the seventh grade? How can she be your, hey, we're allowed to have more than, listen, I want as many as I can get. But I want real friends, not Facebook friends. I don't know you. I'm your friend. On, I don't know you from a can of paint. You've never said hi to me. I've never said hi to you. And some of you won't believe it and won't admit it, but you're hurting right now. You honestly feel, and I'm not belittling that, some of you feel like you don't fit in. I have to produce. If I don't, it diminishes my worth. And the result... You feel like you've got to control everything. Your MO is just what I said. I've got to control this situation. Uh, I was privileged in my early life uh, to attend the Norwood, it was called the Norwood Baptist Christian Day School. Does anybody know that school? It was on Cortland Avenue. My friend Debbie's here. I know Debbie knows that school. And I went there through the third grade, and I had a teacher named Bertie, B-E-R-T-I-E, Bertie Phelps, P-H-E-L-P-S. She was my favorite teacher of all time. Uh, she lived on Tilden Avenue in Norwood. Her house was so pristine, you could eat off the floor, beautiful hardwood floors, and she was the most precious teacher. Fifty cents was a whole lot of money in that day. 50 cents. And she said, I am going to give this week the boy or the girl who learns their Bible verse a 50 cent piece. I wish I knew where that was at. But greater than that 50 cent piece were the two verses that I learned and I memorized. I've got them written down here. I can actually quote them. But I want to read them to you because this is how I studied them. And we had to give the address. Anybody remember? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. If you know it, say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will do what, class? Direct your paths. Um, I want our pianist to come up, if you would, please. Scotty or somebody going to play behind me. While the, while the music begins to play, I want you all to look this way for just a minute. I, uh, <clears throat> I know you've heard me say this, but if, if I were an atheist, if I didn't even believe in God, reading a Bible, it's, it's like reading tomorrow morning's headlines. Did you ever ever believe that we would live in a world where little boys and girls are questioning their gender and their sexual identity and it's being supported it's being promoted did you did you ever ever I I, I, I like to watch crime shows but I, admittedly, I, I had the other night, I had to turn it off. I thought, how, do you, how did you do this? He told the police, he said, oh, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not going to kill my girlfriend, but I'm going to kill her kids right in front of her. And he did. He went to a crib and shot a little baby. Shot a little girl leaning up against her bed, terrified shot her how do you do that well you still taking notes you ought to write this down an undetected weakness coupled with an unexpected opportunity and any one of us can do anything as bad as anybody else has ever done don't think you couldn't do something bad <laughs> let me ask you that can you all still see me? Because I can't see you. <laughs> Have you ever done something even today brings shame to your life? A 
Thank you, brother. You ever have you ever done something? You look how how did I ever do that? And I know God's forgiven me. Can I be just super transparent with you? Things I've done. There's some things I've done. I can't believe I did them. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? My dad's here. I want him to hear this. He's 88. I remember getting on the phone with my dad and saying, Dad, I've got to talk to you about something. I want you to hear it from me before you hear it somewhere else. And I told him. You know what my dad said to me? You know what he said? I remember, Dad. He said, well, I guess you wasn't wearing your thinking cap that day, were you, son? He said, you know, you can always come home. He didn't say you're a loser. God will never honor you. God will never bless you. You've ruined your life. Dad said, you can still come home. I want to tell you that today. It doesn't matter how you sabotage your life, how your life feels ruined. You can come home. Come on. You can come today and act a surrender and just say, Lord, here it is. My barber, Scotty, I haven't seen him in forever. I think greatest barber in the city. He has no idea what he meant just walking in. Because it wasn't just him. When he walked in, I got to see his mama and his sissy. And that family means so much to me. I can, hear, I can hear their dad. His laugh was unmistakable. I can hear, I can hear Sonny say, Amen. I, can, I, can, I remember Bill and I remember Tommy and it just... You know, sometimes I've been guilty. When I have friends, I tiptoe around certain areas. I don't want anybody to think I'm talking about her or him or you. I want to tell you something, folks. We're way past that. This world is in a mess. You better get your house in order. Jesus is coming. If you're not saved, and if you are saved, why don't you live life? I don't have to come to church. I get to go to church. How can you say you want to go to a heaven where you're going to be there forever and you don't even go to a church one time or whenever? Come on, brother, that's the truth. And by the way, all churches aren't bad. There's some churches that still love Jesus and love people and preachers like Carol MacDonald and Matthew Holman who preach the Word of God, preach the Bible, preach it in its completion. Amen. The First Baptist Church of Milford Ohio, where my daddy goes to church, preaches the gospel. People are saved. Dr. Rawlings, I sent Matt a little funny thing. Dr. Rawlings used to say, oh, Jamie Ragel, he'd give an invitation at a Tupperware party. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you want to know? I, I would. I'm old. Can't hardly walk up those steps anymore. But I just want to keep preaching. A lot of churches don't even have revivals anymore. Folks like me were dinosaurs. My preaching is not chic. My, my preaching is not trendy. It's not culturally relevant. But I want to tell you, I don't let this culture define me. My life is defined by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I want to ask you, do you know him? Would everybody look this way? Here's the question. Do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? Please, folks, please. Look right at me. Do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? Do you know these beautiful young people here? I wish I were young like you. I, I do. Guys, do you know that you're saved? Do you know for sure that if you die today, you go to heaven? Do you know that you know that you know? Do you know for sure that you're going to heaven?
Ladies, do you know for sure? God, God hasn't saved you if He hasn't changed you. I've been preaching almost 50 years. Do you know that? Brother Carol, almost 50 years. And I've been saying that very thing for 50 years. God has never saved you if He hasn't changed you. If you're living the same life, going the same places, doing the same thing, you never met that Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's watch class. He's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Some of you talk about social media. You can't post a picture that don't have a drink in it. You got to show everybody. Let me show you a prison you want to get involved in. You can't have fun without getting drunk. And one day it's going to eat your soul. It's going to take your life. It's going to destroy your family. It's going to ruin you. Do you know the Jesus in the Bible? Would you do this? Do you mind standing with me? Do you mind? And would you bow your head? My friend Brian's here this morning. Brian not a dear friend. We started praying for him. And we wanted to see him get saved. And at the restaurant, God paved the way, Casey. God opened up the door. I said, Brian, would you like to receive Jesus? And right there at the restaurant, I can't remember, right down the road here, the name of it. Right there, he said, yes, sir, I would. And right there at that table at lunch then, he said, dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. But I know you can. And he put his faith and trust in Jesus. His life has changed. How many friends today, would you just bow your How many friends today would just say, pray for me, Jamie. I, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to heaven. But I do care enough to say, pray for me. Or you may even say, Jamie, there was a time in my life I thought I was saved. I'm not sure now. How many friends all over this building can just take your hand high as you can, hold it straight up in there and say, that's me and God bless you, you and you, and God bless you. Hold it up high. I don't know for sure. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, young man. God bless you, sir. How many of you say, Jamie, I'm saved, but man, I am not living right? That's a fact. I'm not doing what I ought to be doing. I'm ashamed of the way I'm living. I am saved. I've trusted Christ. But I need to draw close to God. I need to believe the truth about what God said about me. How many of you take your hand and say, Brother Regal, I am saved, but I'm not living like I ought to be living. I want to be set free. I want to be forgiven. Take your hand. Hold it up as high as you can. Come on, hold it up as high as you can. God bless you. Would all of you who raised your hand look right this way? If you raised your hand, look right this way. And if you meant it when you said, I want to be free, God, I want you to change my life. I surrender. I want you to get right out of your seat. I don't want you to wait one minute, not one second. Get right out of your seat. Gather around this altar and say, here it is, Lord. Come right now. Don't wait. Just come. Come on. Come on. All over the building. Come on. Come on. You come on. You come on. Amen. And I want some landmark folks to just come and make a blanket behind them now. You come on, landmark folks. You come behind and make a blanket behind our friends. Come on. Just make a blanket of prayer. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon the cross. I just never know. I'll never know how much it cost. 
If you're at the altar, would you look right at me? Folks, you've done this before. Let's do it today and mean it. Let's do it today and drive a stake. You may or may not believe me, but I'm telling you the truth. Look, you show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. You show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You show me who your friends are, I'll show you where you're heading. Would you come today and just say, Lord, here it is. I surrender all. God, here it is. Take my life and use me. I have a shirt. I sell it at our table. I wear it all. I got four or five different covers. I want everybody to know eternity is a long time to be wrong. Man, get that settled today. If you're not saved, well, what if I'm saved and I'm already saved? That's not possible, first of all. But I'd rather be saved twice than lost once. Does that make sense? I'd rather know that I 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 know. Will you pray with me? Let's close our eyes. If you don't know that you're saved, if you don't know and you want to get it settled, pray this with me from your heart. Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. But I know you can. With my mouth I confess. And in my heart I believe that you died for me. And I place my faith, I place my trust in you, Jesus what you did for me I accept you Jesus as my Lord and my Savior please accept me this is my humble prayer nobody looking but if you prayed that raise your hand high as you can straight up in the air high as you can I want to see high as you can one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 people who said, Lord, now let's just say a prayer for everybody else. God love you. I love you. But he loves you more. He does. If you're here and you're saved, but you're not living right, come on. Pray this with me. Dear Lord, I've not been living like I should or could. I've tried in my own power and tried in my own strength. And I fail miserably. But Lord, today I want to believe the truth about who I am in you. The strength that I possess in you. The worth that I possess in you. The acceptance of I possess in you the health the healing the hope that I possess in you God help me to believe that help me to live for you in Jesus name amen our pastor is going to come and uh, are y'all going to sing a little song would you sing